Hello everybody and welcome to Storytime. Today I've got an old Native American tale for you and it's called How Coyote Stole Fire. In the early days of the world, a long, long time ago, man would be happy during the spring. The days got longer, the sun shone, cool breezes blew through the trees, the flowers started to grow and the countryside came back to life. In the summer, the warm sun shone down, there was plenty of food for everybody, and that continued into the autumn with lots of fruit on the trees, which eventually changed into beautiful colours. But then the leaves fell, and winter came. And in the winter, it would be freezing cold, the days were short, the nights were long. And it was a terrible time for man, and he really suffered through that season. One day, Coyote was walking through the forest, and he heard some women singing. They were singing a sad song about the terrible times they'd had through the winter and all the hardships. And then he heard a woman call out, If only we had a piece of the sun, a piece of the sun to keep us warm and give us light through the winter, then we'd be fine, then we'd be happy. Now, Coyote was one of the wisest of the animals. He was also a friend to man. And he also knew where the sun could be found. He knew that the sun could be found at the top of a high sacred mountain. And he thought he was going to get some of the sun and bring it to man to help. So he set off through the forests and up the mountain until he came to the sun, which took the form of a great fire, which roared and crackled. But it wasn't as easy as just taking a piece of fire and bringing it back to the people below. No, no, the sun was guarded. It was guarded by the fire spirits, who took the form of great, ferocious giants. They had eyes that shone like burning coals, and for hands they had sharp talons. And they watched the fire very closely because they didn't want anybody to know their secret and they certainly didn't want humans to have a hold of the fire for themselves. They heard a rustling under the trees and at once they were wary that perhaps a thief had come to steal the fire. But when they realised it was only a coyote then, they paid him no more attention. Coyote sat and watched very closely to see what would happen. He was interested to see how the fire was kept going. The giants would take pieces of wood and pine cones and throw them onto the blaze. And if any of the fire spat out to the sides and started to set alight any of the dry grass around, it was quickly stamped out and the fire was controlled. Coyote realised that fire was a very dangerous thing and it could never be left alone. It had to be watched all of the time. But how could he steal some? This was a conundrum. He watched for a few days and he did find that there was one time, only one time when the fire was left unguarded, but only for a very short moment. It was when the fire giant went to wake his sister who was sleeping in a hut. Early in the morning, it sometimes took him a couple of minutes because she was very reluctant to get up out of bed and he would take some time to wake her up then she would come out and take over guarding the fire while he would go and lie down and take a rest. In this couple of minutes, that would be his chance when he could take some fire and run away with it. But he was going to need help. And so he ran all the way down the mountain and back to the forest and gathered some of the creatures around him. Who will help me? he asked. I'm trying to bring some fire down for the humans so they can be warm and have light through the winter. Three animals offered to help him, and they were the squirrel, the chipmunk, and also the frog. The next day, the four animals walked through the forest and up the mountain to the great fire. And again, they made a rustling noise as they walked through the trees, and the fire giants were wary. Had somebody come to steal their fire? Was there a thief hiding in the trees? Oh no, just some small animals. Nothing to worry about. Now, the next morning, Coyote had his chance. When the fire spirit walked to the hut to wake his sister, he made his move. He ran to the fire and grabbed a piece of burning wood in his mouth. But no sooner had he turned to run 
when the fire giant had turned and walked back outside again. She'd been woken early and she saw the coyote running away with a fire. She bellowed after her brother to come out and quickly they chased off in hot pursuit. Down the mountainside ran the coyote and also the squirrel, the chipmunk and the frog running for their lives with the two giants chasing after the first of the fire giants reached out with his great talon and grabbed poor Coyote by the tail and it singed it pure white. That's why, boys and girls, to this day, if you see a picture of a coyote, they have white tails burnt by the fire. Coyote threw the fire as hard as he could and it landed on Squirrel's back. It was so hot that poor Squirrel had her fur singed red and her tail curled upwards. To this day, squirrels are still red and their tails curl up. Squirrel passed the fire onto Chipmunk, but Chipmunk was terrified and she stood really still, scared, as the giants reached out and with their great talon scratched three claw marks down her back. And to this day, boys and girls, you'll notice that a chipmunk has the three black claw marks down its back. Quickly, Chipmunk threw the fire towards Frog, and Frog ran as quick as he could, but he wasn't quick enough. The giants were huge, and the giants were fast, and she reached out and grabbed Frog's tail so hard, but Frog managed to pull away. The tail came off in the giant's hand. <coughs> you notice today, boys and girls, that a frog no longer has a tail. But Frog was quick, and it bounded off, hopping along with the fire stick in its mouth and he passed it to the wood spirits at the edge of the woodland and wood took the fire and wouldn't let go no matter how the giants pleaded the wood spirits would not give up the fire they kept a hold of it and so now very cross the giants had to return to the sun to their great fire up in the mountain knowing that now man would have their secret now, Coyote was wise and clever, and he was happy to tell man of the secret of how they could get fire from wood. And from that day onwards, man was never cold again through the winter. They had light and they had heat to see them right the way through the year, through the nights and the cold winter season. And we still have the fire to give us light and warmth to this very day. And that's the story of how Coyote stole fire. I hope you enjoyed that one boys and girls and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.